What's up YouTube, today we're going to take a look at Leecrow problem number 512, Gameplay Analysis 2. Mark this easy, let's get into it. So just like in Gameplay Analysis 1, we have a table called Activity, which contains four columns, Player ID, Device ID, Event, Date, Games Played. This table shows the activity of players of some game. Each row is a record of a player who logged in and played a number of games, it might be zero, before logging out on some day using some device. Write a SQL query that reports the device that is first logged in for each player. The query result format is in the following example. Result table should just contain player ID and a device ID, which should be the first device they logged in with. Let's get into it. So if you did the question gameplay analysis one, they actually asked for the first time a player logged in. And now we just want the corresponding device ID for that first login date. So we can probably use event date as well and use min to get the first log in date, just like we did for gameplay analysis one. And then we just need the device ID for that date. And you might want to do something similar to this, selecting player ID, the device ID, and minimum event date. All right, and if we select that from activity and group by player ID, then we should get a player, the first login date, and then the device ID, right? So let's run this, see what this gives us. Um, Seems like it's actually correct. One, two, two, three, and three, one. So if we were to just put brackets around this and then select device ID and player ID, we would get the correct output for this example. But I can probably spoil that there's something wrong with that and that's not gonna get accepted in terms of an accepted sub submission. So if we select device ID, player ID, as I said, from this subquery, let's call this table lookup, then it says accepted here. But what happens here is select player ID, min event date, and device ID is just gonna pick out the first device ID it finds after the minimum event date. It doesn't have to be the one in the same row as the minimum event date. So that's where the catch is. So if we change up the test case and change something up a little bit, we're gonna see that it doesn't work. So this table here, activity, our input table, example table, is actually ordered by event date for each player. As you can see, player one logged in twice, first date was March, then in May. And same for player D3, logged in in 2016 and then 2018. What if we change that date from 2016 to 2019, which makes it higher than the other date? If we run that code now, it's gonna be incorrect because it just takes the first value for device ID and it doesn't correspond to the minimum event date. As you can see, we still get player D3, but then we get device 4. If we just run the subquery, maybe that's even more clear, because we will get 3, then the date in 2018, which is the minimum date, but then we get 1, which is up here, and the event date is this one. So it should be device ID 4 because that one is connected to event date. So how do we actually establish that? It's a little bit more complicated but it pretty much uses the same idea. So we can use that idea of looking at the first login date. So let's remove device ID for now and if we run that code it's just going to give us the minimum event date aka first login date per player. So for player 1 it's in 2016 for player 2 it's some date in 2017 and for player 3 it's that date in 2018. So now we just need to get the device ID for that date, right? 
So we're actually going to self-join and that way just look up the device ID that is in the table activity for that date. So we need to join on activity again and let's see how we do this. So let's call this one A for simplicity and join activity B on a dot player ID should be B dot player ID so that we look at the same player and then we're also going to use event date. It's even stated that player ID and event date is the primary key of the table so we're just going to use that. So A dot event date is B dot event date and that should establish our join. And now let's see what we need to select. We need to select player ID. It doesn't matter from which table because yeah, they should be the same if we're looking at the join condition. And then we want to select B dot device ID. All right. So running this should give us an accepted output. I just forgot to rename this to event date because if you're using min, it's going to change up the column name. But running this should give us an accepted output. Let's submit that to see if it gets accepted as well. That's the case and that is a solution for that. There's also another way of doing this with window functions, which is quite easy if you know the concept and it's using row numbers, so let's try that as well. So for this approach we're going to use window functions and window functions allow us to run functions on pre-partitioned and pre-ordered tables by defining a partitioning and ordering. So in this case we want to partition by player ID, so we look at each player ID separately and then order by event date ascendingly. So if the table wasn't ordered here it would then look somehow like this and now we're able to run functions on that table that is pre-partitioned and pre-ordered. Then we want to use the row number function to assign row numbers to these rows. So we would get another column called row number or R to make it short here that's going to just iterate over these partitions in that order. So for player ID 1 that is the first column we're going to add a 1 here. Player ID 1 in the second column we're going to add a 2. And then we go to player ID 2, which is another player ID, so we're going to start counting at 1 again. It's getting value 1. Same thing for player ID 3. New player ID, we're going to start counting at 1. We have player ID 3 again in the next row. We're going to add 2 as a rank. So let's just code that out real quick to visualize it. So we want to select player ID, device ID, event date, now use that row number window function using that syntax that includes over, partition by and order by. Partition by is where we define which field we want to partition by. Obviously we're going to use player ID so we're going to recount at each player ID we see and we're going to order by event date. Ascendingly I can just omit ascending here because that's the default ordering in SQL. Okay, and we're selecting all that from activity still. And let's call that row number window function just R to make it shorter. So this is going to output the first three columns of the activity table and then also our row number which is going to reset here when you see the new player ID is very cool because now we can look at each player ID, see what is the first login date by just looking at that row number. If that's one, that's the, the first occurrence for that player ID. So let's just use that on, and filter on that, which is a common thing. So let's call that lookup, our sub query, because it's like a lookup table. And now let's select player ID device ID, which is what we need for our output, from it, and then use 
R to filter. So row number should be one, which is only going to give us the rows which have the first login date. And we're just selecting player ID and device ID from that, which is what we want. So let's run that code and see if it works. It's accepted. Let's submit that as well. And we're going to get an accepted output, which is very cool. Window functions can be quite impressive if you use them. And you can also change it up to get the second login date or device if that would be interesting. So that is a bit easier to just change up as opposed to the first approach where we used minimum and minimum only. So here we could also maybe change it to R is small or equal to 5, which would give us the devices people used to log in for the first five times. Yeah, so that is a bit more versatile, easy to adopt and change, so that is a great solution. Anyways, that's been it for this video. I'm also going to go through the other gameplay analysis problems on lead code, and I have a bunch of other videos on SQL. So stick around and consider subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next video.